Hello everyone. Today we are going to spend a couple minutes talking about medicine on the Lewis and Clark expedition. My name is Dana Morrison and I am with the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center and Fort Mandan. Uh, so this is a topic that you can spend hours talking about. Uh, in their almost three year journey, they certainly encountered a lot of medical emergencies and ailments that they had to treat. Um, but we're just gonna highlight a few of the major incidences that they encountered on their expedition. Um, now Lewis and Clark, they did not have a doctor with them. And that could have been for a number of reasons, whether it was because Lewis met with Dr. Benjamin Rush, one of the most preeminent doctors of the time, and so it was decided, well, they probably don't need a doctor if they have all this knowledge. Uh, or the fact that uh, military regulations said that you need at least 45 men to have one surgeon. And the Lewis and Clark expedition did not have 45 military men. So that could have been a reason as well. Regardless, uh, they seemed to do just fine without it. Lewis and Clark were very capable in taking care of their men. Uh, so we're going to explore a little bit in this trunk, uh, something similar to what Lewis would have purchased uh, and outfitted for about $90. So this is full of medication and full of medical instruments that they would have brought with them. Now we'll go through a few of the, the medicines and kind of describe a, a particular event that went on associated with that medicine. Uh, now this one, you could bring up a lot of examples. This is uh, Dr. Benjamin Rush's Thunderclappers, a very famous pill that Lewis and Clark brought with them on their expedition. It has mercury in it, and the idea is to purge the body. You know, you've got something bad in, you gotta get it out. Uh, that was the goal of these pills. They brought 600 of these pills with them on their expedition, and they ran out before they returned home. So they were pretty liberal in giving these out. Uh, one example uh, of doling these out is the death of Sergeant Charles Floyd. Uh, now he didn't die because of these, because they were laced with mercury. Uh, they believe that he died of a burst appendix. But not knowing what was wrong with him, wanting to get whatever bad stuff uh, is in him out of him, Lewis would have administered Dr. Rush's thunderclappers. Uh, he also would have uh, bled Sergeant Floyd. And so we've got um, an example here of kind of different instruments used to, to bleed a person. Again, get bad stuff out of you by way of bleeding the person. Um, but of course, despite all their best efforts, Sergeant Floyd uh, did end up passing away uh, from an ailment that nothing could have been done to save him, unfortunately. Um, another piece of medicine that was brought along is Peruvian bark, which you see here. Now of that $90 that they spent to outfit their medical trunk, $30 was spent on Peruvian bark alone. So obviously very important to them. Now this would be used to reduce fevers or to uh, help with malaria, to help aid in that aspect. Again, very much across the board, used on different people. Uh, it was also used on Sacagawea. So in June of 1805, just a few months after they leave Fort Mandan, she becomes very, very ill. Um, we're not sure exactly what ailed her. It has been thought to be an a inflammatory pelvic infl infection uh, or gonorrhea, perhaps. Lots of speculation on to what that was. Uh, but we do know the treatment that she got from Lewis. Peruvian bark was one of them, try and reduce that fever. Uh, Dr. Rush's thunderclappers was another. She was also bled and given uh, water with sulfur and iron in it. And it was a little touch and go for a while. They weren't sure if she was going to survive, but it ended up that she was able to heal from that ailment and continue on, which is huge for the expedition. If she would have passed away, it would have been a, a completely different expedition. Another big medical event is also associated with Sacagawea, and that is the birth of her child. Um, now, to aid in that, Lewis helped, helped try to get the, the baby to come, but it was a very long, arduous, painful 
intense labor session. Um, so the, the cure or to help get the baby out didn't come from Lewis or Clark. It actually came from the Mandan interpreter that they had hired uh, named René Jusson. Uh, and he suggested taking the rattle of a rattlesnake, crushing it up into water, having her drink it. Um, they were a little skeptical, it seems, but again, after hours of labor, they thought, well, it can't hurt. So they, they did that for her, and within 10 minutes, her son Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau was born. Now, it's hard to tell whether or not it was just a coincidence or if the rattle actually helped, but I'm sure she certainly felt relieved after being able to finally give birth to her son. There are different instances along the expedition as well that are not just easily cured by ingesting medicine. Um, of course, I mentioned the bloodletting. That would be one way a little more intense. Um, another thing that they have to be prepared for as well is stitches. Um, you know, you can be going through brush and using a knife, and it happened a few times where someone cut themselves in their leg as that's happening, and so Lewis would have to administer stitches. And it's not always stitches to people. There was one instance of where his dog, Seaman, was bitten by a beaver on the artery and uh, started to, to bleed quite heavily. Um, they would have had to put pressure on the wound. Whether or not they, they used a tourniquet similar to this, we're not sure, or if they just put physical pressure with their hands. But they were able to get the bleeding under control. Lewis stitched, uh, stitched the wound up, and a week later, Seaman was was pretty healthy, back to helping guard, make sure that everything's okay. So all was able to be okay uh, with semen. There are other instances of Lewis, again, doing a little more intense surgery as well. Um, and that happened here at Fort Mandan. During that winter, uh, there was a Mandan boy who was exposed to the cold. He was outside all night with only a buffalo robe, and his feet got severely frostbitten. Lewis initially tried to cure it by putting the boy's feet in the snow, you know, fight cold with cold. Uh, of course, that's not really gonna help any. You don't, you don't fight cold with cold, as we know nowadays. Um, and of course, that didn't work back then either. So Lewis had to, to perform some surgery. Uh, specifically, he would have had to take an amputation knife similar to this and amputate uh, toes on both feet. Uh, but he was able to, to help out the boy. Um, and he was paid in food as service for that. Uh, so they do have a small amputation knife. They would have brought something larger as well, just in case they needed it. Um, there are certainly a lot of other ailments along the way, um, including venereal disease, which they also get here. Now that is something that Lewis and Clark planned for. They, they did bring syringes in order to uh, ingest mercury into their patients. Uh, so they either ingested it, like I said, with the syringes, or they just rubbed mercury onto um, the, the person afflicted with the disease. Uh, so it wasn't a surprise that they got venereal diseases, although it sounds like it was pretty miserable to deal with, as you can imagine, and certainly miserable to treat as well, uh, knowing what we know now about mercury and the fact that it can poison you. Um, and again, the list goes on about all the things that they encountered. You know, Lewis was shot along the way. People suffered from malaria, rheumatism, scurvy, and the list goes on. Um, but I just wanted to give you a little taste today and show you different products that they would have brought with them to help them get better on their expedition. Um, if you want to learn more about anything, you can certainly come visit us here at the Interpretive Center. We'd love to have a discussion with you and kind of explore all the fascinating aspects of the medicine of the expedition. Or we do have a few books available in our store, certainly other places we've got. If you want to learn more about the venereal diseases, we've got that book. Uh, this is called Or Perish in the Attempt, uh, and Only One Man Died. These are a few 
really good books on the expedition, certainly a lot more that you can explore as well. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this, this video and learning just a taste about all the medical emergencies and ailments that they had to deal with on the expedition. And we hope that you want to learn more. Uh, so thanks for joining us.